question Maybe from Rachel. Idiot. How would you tailor event sponsorships to 10,000 attendees? Everyone has their objectives. Yeah. So, you know, likely what's happening is the sponsor is coming in because they want to reach your ideal audience, which in this case is all 10,000 attendees. I don't think that there's many cases where I sponsored an event and I'm only looking to get five people to come here. If maybe it's highly strategic. You know, the CEO of Apple is going to be there and you just need to get him as a customer, right? Like, okay, that's probably an edge case scenario on here, but chances are that if I was doing a uh, tailored sp uh, event sponsorships is that this is the first question I always ask all my sponsors. What are your objectives? You know, is it that you're brand new and you just need people to be aware of your brand and your logo and things like that? Well, that has completely different objectives than, you know, for example, that sponsorship I was working on, I was looking for leads and I wanted actual leads that were going to come in. And the big thing for me in my sponsorship was, this is where they started like pulling me in different ways is that they started saying like, okay, well, this is how much sponsorship dollars you have. This is what we can do for you. And I said, okay, well, we're giving you this technology. We want to put sponsored by Bizbo above the badge. So people know this is our tech. My goal is for to get people who need this and want this and like this to know it's us and to reach out to us. They came back and said, no, you need a lanyard sponsorship, which is usually just the name printing on the actual lanyard. And the reason why that costs so much more money is that I'm covering all the lanyard costs, right? Well, in reality, you know, I'm not looking about the lanyard. In fact, you could still sell the lanyard sponsorship. I just want to put one line of text right here. And I'm willing to give you money for it. And you could still sell your line of sponsorship. They fell into a place where they literally thought to themselves, here's the box I'm in. I can only do this. And I think that's where a lot of sponsorship people get stuck is this idea that it's like it's more about me as the organizer and what I need to accomplish than it is about what the sponsor needs to accomplish. And you'd be really surprised that when you have that conversation, say, what's your objectives? What have you worked on in the past? What's worked? What hasn't worked? What would be an ideal outcome for you? You can have a much better conversation. And chances are the sponsor needs a lot less than you think they need. But because you put them into a sponsorship package because they're giving you so much money the chances are that you're giving them maybe even stuff they don't even care about. You know, like we always talk about like the joke about how I'm going to throw your logo up on our website. And I'm like, cool with 25 other logos. No one knows who, you know, Bizabo is. So how is that going to get me more leads? Right? Like this is a challenge I think that we have when it comes to it. So what I would say my advice to you, Rachel, is just ask the sponsor, what are you looking to achieve in your business in the next year? And what do you have in mind? And let's start with that. And chances are, and this is the part that kind of frustrated me with the sponsorship conversation, all the things we asked for didn't conflict with any other sponsorship things. They weren't exclusives. They weren't, you know, things that like would massively impact, you know, taking up more space on a banner or, oh my gosh, it's more work for you guys. We asked them for very simple things that didn't conflict with anybody. And instead of being like, yes, we'll help you achieve that and like make it a win-win, Instead, it was, how can me as the organizer win? And that was the part that ended up having us kind of feeling a little bit sour in the mouth about our sponsorship. Good answer there, Will. Rachel, what I would add is, I, I think you should try to put yourself in the people that are paying the sponsor's shoes, right? So if you were them, like one thing that I would always think with sponsorship is I want to be creative, not disruptive, right? I want to be creative. I want to get my message out there. I want to have an impact. I don't want to do something just to do it. No one wants to sponsor just to sponsor unless you're a cause, right? Most of these things are not for a cause. So, you know, how can you create a win-win with your sponsorships, right? And then how can you be creative, not disruptive in like, I don't know, maybe come up with 10 crazy ideas that are a little bit different, a little bit off the shelf, and then call your best sponsors and say, hey, what do you think of this, right? If it sucks, just tell me. If you love it, awesome. We're going to put this in a package this year or find a way to do it. Or if you want it right now, I'll give it to you at 70% off because you're giving me feedback. But those would just be two thoughts I would have there. Love it.